Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to build a firewall slash router. Ooh, exciting stuff. That's right. Now I want to talk, um, that's right. We're going to build a firewall slash router and you know, the software I'm going to use is PF sense. Why use anything else? Uh, so anyway, I've got a client, uh, and he has his home network set up connected to his office network and he works remotely and, uh, he's got a Synology at home that backs up his office, uh, Synology, et cetera. And right now he's on Spectrum, and we haven't had really good luck with them. Uh, they put a new modem in, and when they put this modem in, they they didn't check all of his old settings and, and repro reproduce them on the new modem. And so we got over there, and it, everything was screwed up. We couldn't uh, we couldn't reconfigure the new modem at the time because the uh, system was down. Support couldn't get into the modem, and. And I just turned to the client. I said, look, if you've got Google Fiber available in the area, why don't you just order a plain Google Fiber connection? You know, no frills, no wireless, no nothing. We'll put our own router firewall in here and we'll get it configured. And you'll be up and running. You'll be happy as a clam. And so that's what he did. Uh, and sure enough, Google came out and all they did was put a, basically a, uh, a jack in, an Ethernet jack, no modem. No fuss, no muss. Everything's in bridge mode. No wireless. No, no complicated questions, you know, or or configuration issues to deal with. And now it's up to me to make everything work. Now the one thing they did do is they verified with the client that he's actually getting an IP address and actually has a connection to the internet. And this is one thing I really like about Google Fibers. Like my ISP, which is my electric company, they listen and they give the customer what they want. And they don't come in and they don't force a wireless modem down your throat. They don't make you use their modem or their router. And I like that. And the customer likes it too. So now what I want to talk about is the equipment I chose uh, to use for this. And we'll go over to the bench. We'll take a look at it. And then we'll come back and, and we'll talk some more. All right. So here we are at the workbench. And what I've got here is an all-in-one computer. I was We were talking about this unit in discord uh last weekend after i did my live stream last year i got these for 219 bucks and i'll show you what it is here in a second but anyway uh, i want to make sure that what we're going to do is build a pf sense firewall for a client's home computer system that needs to be as reliable as his office so he's got google fiber i'm going to go out there friday and we're going to install this as his firewall so I'm going to put PF Sense on this. Now the 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 deal with this is I wanted whatever unit I used to make sure it had only Intel NICs in it. I don't want to be strapped with uh, with Realtek and have problem with with the NIC cards. So I made it abundantly clear that the only unit I wanted to buy was one with Intel NIC cards, and this one has all Intel NICs. And a lot of people are like, well, why do you buy these cheap Chinese all-in-one computers? Um, well, because they work. And, you know, this one's pretty well built. Uh, so let's go ahead and open it up. I'll show it to you here. Here is the unit itself. So it's nicely packaged. And um, I got to tell you, so this is the unit. It's the VN OPN is the tag on it here. I'll show it to you. VN OPN. Um, but you notice it has four four ports on it, and and it has Wi-Fi. So in theory, this could also be an access point. Now it has two USB three HDMI, or I'm sorry, is this? Yeah, it's HDMI. VGA, uh, power button, reset button, and it comes with a 12-volt uh, adapter. Now this, this is all metal. This is not, this is not cheapy, creepy plastic. This is all metal. 
and I believe that this is uh, it's capable of having an expansion port in there. Um, now this unit I bought, I think it has 8 gig of RAM. We'll, we'll look up the specs on it here in a minute. But just to show you, give you an idea of how heavy this thing is. So we're going to put this scale here I have on pounds, ounces. This thing weighs 1 pound 7.1 ounces. Or for you folks in the, in the other part of the world... Uh, it's 0.656 kilograms or 656 grams. So it's got quite a bit of oomph to it. It's pretty, pretty well built. Um, let's see here. Does it have any specs? No. There's no paperwork of any kind inside of here. So once we get back to my desk, I'll get you the specs. This is the accessories box. So let me get these, get this open. Let's see. So it comes with a comes with a user's manual, a uh, little thing written in Chinese. The power supply is a uh, 100 to 240 watt, 12 volt, 3 amp output. A uh, little cheapy, creepy, Dejing uh, power supply. Um, and then here's our antennas. Here is a uh, mounting bracket and mounting screws. Here's another, here's a power cord. Uh, and it has some rubber feet as well. Let's see what the user's manual says. Let's see how... Uh, complete it is. I love a box that just kind of comes all apart. It's like a puzzle. You get a free puzzle in every box. That's what this is. Um, I've used this brand before twice with two other clients. Uh, they, it works well. I haven't had any problems with it at all. So I continue to buy it. Uh, Amazon, you know, stands behind it. So here's some more information uh, about the unit that I purchased. Um, Everybody recommends Protectly to me for these uh, PFSense firewalls, but I've used this product from VN, VNOPN, whatever it is. Uh, VNOPN. I don't even know how you would begin, begin to pronounce it, but anyway, this is this is the model I've used. This is the third one I bought. Uh, it's well made. You saw the weight of the unit. Uh, it works very, very efficiently. And it's reasonably priced, uh, considering uh, you know what prices are these days. The unit I got is a uh, N3700 uh, Celeron processor, 8 gig and 128 gig uh, NVMe SSD in it. Uh, it's a quad core chip. It supports AES NI cryptographic. Um, you know, just a good unit. You can't beat it. Uh, I've had really good luck with it. It even has uh, two wireless or wireless built into it and four network ports. And it even warns you on here it's an Intel Pentium, uh, but the NIC is not. It uses the Intel 225 network card chip. It doesn't support Sophos, Untangle, IP Copper, Windows 7. Uh, it has Intel HD graphics, it's got 8 gig of DDR3 RAM. It's plenty fast enough. Uh, it's a 12 volt unit. Yeah. Um, it's, it's about all you need for a good firewall. So it, it comes pre-installed with Windows 10 on it. Um, and it's, uh, showing it's a, it's a Pentium N CPU N3700 at 1.6, but I guess it boosts its speed because right now it's running at about 2.4 gigahertz. It's got eight gig of RAM and it comes with an SSD drive in it. Uh, 128 gig share VDI uh, SSD. Um, so yeah, it's you know comes ready to go out of the box. Now of course the I think they've got the language in Chinese, but that's okay. But you know this will, we can bring it up. We can run some tests on it under Windows, see how it do, see how it performs, and then uh, ultimately I'm going to install PF Sense on this. But I just want to boot it up here just to get an idea of how it's going to how it's going to operate. I'm going to plug a network cable into it real quick, just so we can. Uh, 
see if we get some connectivity here. Now plug the network cable in. We'll see if it gets an IP address. Evidently it did. All right, so now we have connectivity. Uh, let's see here. Let's, uh, I don't want to show available networks. Where's hardware? Where are hardware and connection properties? There we go. So there we go. It's showing all four of the Ethernet controllers. Of course, it's got Ethernet 1 labeled, but Windows is identifying it as Ethernet 4, as you can see. It's getting an IP address on Unky Joe's Playhouse Network. So we know that's working. So yeah, you know, no complaints. It's a little, uh, it's a nice little unit. Um, it's well made. We'll see how hot it gets. Here you can see on the back are the, uh, there's a hard drive indicator power, uh, LAN LED. These are Intel uh, I-225V uh, connections. Let's show you here on the monitor. So right there, it's an Intel Ethernet I-225-V. Uh, and it is currently pulling about 18, uh, 15 watts. Uh, and Windows is doing updates, so, you know, all that's good, I guess. So uh, I'm gonna run some tests on it, run on Windows, make sure it's, it's up and running okay and it's stable, and then we'll get PFSense installed on it. So I've customized this unit. I put it on the dark theme and I've, I've expanded the dashboard out to three columns, as you can see. I just wanted to go over some of the settings that I personally change every time I install PFSense. And right now it's just on my five network as a firewall for my one network, my 168.1 network. So that's why you're seeing the follow the, these IP addresses in here. So if we go to system and go to general setup, uh, make sure you give it a name. I've given it a name and a domain, uh, and I put in my DNS servers. Uh, I've got it set to my local time zone. I've set the theme to PFSense dark. That's where you can put it in the dark. One of the big things that bugs me, I like this navigation bar to stay up at the top. So I have it set to fixed remains visible at the top of the page. And then if we go under advanced settings or yeah, go under advanced settings. Let me see, what do we change here? I enable SSH, secure shell. What else do I do? Then over here on firewall and NAT, I make sure that I add, where is it here? I change the NAT reflection. If you're doing any local hosting, like if you're hosting a website, a mail server, anything locally, you're, you're going to find that you want to put your NAT reflection in, in pure NAT uh, and also set your one-to-one -one, uh, NAT for reflection um, and enable automatic outbound NAT for reflection. That way, if you have any websites, like I say, that you host internally, and you try to get to, to them using your public IP or domain name, the firewall will allow them to come back in. So that's a, a very important to, uh, setting to change. Uh, let's see, under networking, I disable um, IPv6. I don't use it, but you know you have to do that on based on your situation, what your ISP allows or has. Let's see, miscellaneous. Uh, I also make sure that I turn on I like to turn on the AES NI CPU based acceleration for the cryptographic hardware. And then the thermal set, uh, sensors will depend on your setting. You, I use ACPI, but you could have, you could base it on the Intel Core CPU on die or the AMD K8, K10, and K11 CPU on die thermal sensor. You'll just have to play with that setting and see what works for you. And then those are the basic things that I set. Um, and then, uh, oh, yeah, one more thing. I don't know whether it's under general. Yeah, I, I changed the dashboard columns to three. And uh, that way I get three three columns across the top. And then you, you can add, these are called your widgets. So you can add widgets. I've added like the interface, the gateway, the interface statistics, uh, and the services. Um, but you can add whatever you want just by clicking on this little plus button up here. 
and then you have a plethora of uh, of uh, things you can add to this uh, dashboard. So just keep that in mind when you're configuring it. And then once you get it all configured the way you want, you want to come over here to Diagnostics, Backup, and Restore. And you want to download your configuration as an XML file. And that's what I've done. I've saved it to my downloads. And you can rename that whatever you want once you get it downloaded. But don't don't forget to download that. That'll save you a lot of time. If you have some very complex NAT settings, um, you'll want to make sure you're doing a backup every time you make changes to that so that you can go back to a previous configuration if necessary. And those are basically the settings I use uh, to configure uh, the firewall. Now, I know a lot of you out there are probably asking, why didn't I use something like OpenSense or some other software on there? Well, because I know PFSense and I trust it. Um, so I chose to use version 2.6 on this. Uh, I did have a little trouble creating a, a USB key and getting it to boot properly. Uh, because you have to make sure, I had to make sure this unit was in UEFI mode to get it to boot properly. And once I figured that out, then it was a breeze. So I had it installed in about five or ten minutes. And then you saw the configuration on it. So it was dead simple. And once you've done a few PFSense firewalls, and I and I shared those general settings I use out of the box, it's, it's pretty easy peasy to use. So, um, and you know, I just think PFSense is the best out there for... For my needs, now your needs might vary, and there's tons of other firewall router pieces of software out there. Now, I chose to go this route because I can then control the uh, ports that are open, etc., etc., because we do have to open some ports on this firewall for the client for him to come back into his system at home. Um, but, you know, with dynamic DNS and dynamic uh, and with NAT, uh, and and open ports were able to do that, um, and then Google Fiber. The thing the thing about them is they just kind of get out of the way, and they provide you a pipe to the internet, which is kind of what your electric company does and your phone company when you think about it. They don't force their equipment on you other than a meter, uh, and they don't. But they don't tell you what light bulbs you can buy. They don't tell you what TV you can use. They don't tell you uh, how you can talk on the on the phone or what phone you can use. And uh, they just get it. They provide you with a pipe to the to whatever service it is you need, and they get the hell out of the way. And that's the best way I think. Now this client, I also set up uh, Amazon Eero Wireless, their mesh networking, and he's been very happy with that. Uh, and we're going to continue to use that there. Now, I have I have I was set up to deliver this unit and install it for the client, but he had to cancel on me, and so we're going to be doing it next week. So I'll be doing a day in the life of showing you this installed up and running uh, and, and how their network works and how we get everything configured. So you got that to look forward to. But anyway, we hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. Please give us a thumbs up down below if you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave your comments down in the comments section. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and click that notification bell to be notified of new videos when they come out. If you'd like to support our channel and keep our content coming, then PayPal, Patreon, the YouTube join function, or just cut out the middleman, become a YouTube premium member. You cut out all the ads on YouTube. It's 12 bucks a month, and a piece of that goes to every creator you watch. So keep that in mind. It's a great way to, to donate uh, to keeping this channel afloat and running. And uh, we do appreciate uh, all of your patronage. Uh, and I'm gr so grateful for all of you who subscribe and support the channel. And we hope you come back and see us again. And please don't forget, we'll see all of you on the other side.